Despite Denver trailing for 71% of the first round, Murray becoming the first player ever to make a go-ahead shot in the final five seconds of multiple games within a single playoff series sent the Lakers to Cancun. It's to the point where the Nuggets seem to prefer taking their time out of the gate to settle in and give their opponents false confidence. I learned in horse racing, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. While the Lakers gave Denver a test amidst getting gentlemen swept, you have to give respect to the reigning champ's ability to flip the switch when need be. The Nugs did the unthinkable by storming back on the Lakers in all four of their victories, begging the question, were they just toying with their competition when they got down? Stay tuned. Right quick, if you're not in the 12.5% of those watching whom are subscribed, please subscribe. Splash thumbs up on this video and follow at Hoops on Instagram and X. Appreciate the entirety of your support for this platform. Back end of the 24, sees Jokic use a subtle yet effective triple threat to get Davis incorrectly second guessing. A long shot equals a long rebound a majority of the time, and off this KCP deep range miss, he's well aware of that saying and grabs his own. Caldwell Pope got hurt earlier as we'll get to, but Contavious returned to cut it to four after his O board. MPJ would get downhill for a barbecue chicken feasting through Reeves. Porter Jr. finding Jokic with Davis doubling and recovering to Porter with a reckless closeout. Cash is Michael out plus one, but he'd miss the charity stripe attempt. Michael's exceptional one-on-one -on -one defense forces this LeBron brick, and it's Aaron coast-to-coasting, -coast drawing attention and dropping it to Nikola, giving Denver its first lead since early in the second quarter. Murray Jokic's screen and roll with non-existent backline help from LA allows Jamal to carve through the Lakers' half-court D with this finger roll. Ram action where KCP sets the off-ball for Joker, sees Nikola then set the on-ball for Reggie, getting Jokic a retrieval in the pocket, and it's his damn elusive pump fake to bait both Hayes and Dinwiddie that leeways this bunny. One of five Porter triples, which were all timely, would be set free off a slick touch pass from AG. In the side, Porter three, go! Final quarter opens with this weak side give and go handoff between Murray and Gordon, where Jamal gets into the paint, draws Hachimura, leaving Watson wide open for Peyton, don't call him Manning, to come up big in a massive spot, as the sophomore out of UCLA makes it a four point advantage for Denver. But LA wasn't going anywhere, especially with their massive free throw advantage. To counter that, it's three Nuggets clearing out for a Murray Jokic pick and roll, preceded by Jamal latching two and finding the MVP to retie it. Taking the quick hands and hustle from Jokic right here to poke it loose by beating AD to the punch, then deflecting it a second time to clear Hachimura, the overwhelming Serbian offensive rebounding leads to a KCP punch to the stomach from deep. Early offense flare screen right here gets the Nuggets another much needed triple in the final stages, this time from MPJ. Night and day more insane than anything outside of the final seconds which are coming up was this play. Nicola draws the double and no one picks up Murray, allowing Jamal to gain momentum for a wrecking ball poster directly on the forehead of LeBron. And Jamal rubs it in afterwards. This man Murray is damn cold. You gotta love him. From force to finesse, and Blue Arrow chiseling downhill for an acrobatic clearing of Reeves nets him a clutch finessing. Jokic is known as a defensive liability. Possessions like these display otherwise. Guarding LeBron in the clutch, we see Jokic press up to cut off the triple, then shuffle to cut off the midi and force the kick out. This flows into Jokic attacking Hachimura in an off the dribble transition to the post, where he goes to work to cap off a timely two way play. When the Lakers finally neutralize the Murray Jokic two man game right here, it's Gordon incredibly out hustling James for this ridiculous offensive rebound. Aaron then kicks to Jamal for an overlooked triple that was fundamental in this Denver winning effort. But in a TNT classic, it would all come down to the dying seconds, as Murray, with Reeves initially guarding him and also staying with him as the Lakers opt to play drop instead of switch, sees Jamal stop short just inside the foul line for a one-legged drifting sideways jumper that wins Denver a fifth consecutive playoff series, sending them that much closer to a repeat. Quickly recapping his two game winners throughout the first round, here was Blue Arrow himself. Uh, game two I went right, and game four I went five and went left.
Much more interestingly than that, Jamal would state post-game that the doctors told him not to play, but of course he suited up anyway, and you have to take a listen to why Jamal decided to risk his health. Yeah, I came a little earlier today to see if I was going to be able to go, and I felt like I could, and they just didn't want me to risk it. They told me no. They told me no. I didn't say no. I didn't want to leave my teammates out there. You know, we, we've been battling all season. Everybody's hurt at some point. Everybody's going through something. And uh, I just wouldn't be able to live with myself if I wasn't able to play this game. So I'm just glad to listen to me listening to my body and just trusting me with it. So it was a team effort. Many players, even quote-unquote superstars, can learn from that approach from Murray and his medical staff. Jamal persevering through Game 5 despite doctors initially calling him off but ultimately letting him play, and posting an incredibly clutch game-high 32 points, culminating in a record-setting shot, revealed how much the Canadian cares about his teammates, the fans, and the game of basketball. Jamal has matured into someone who just understands the business of the NBA on and off the court, making him easy to work with. For Serbian Nikola Jokic, it seemed like an off night for Joker given his sloppy play resulted in him committing a game high by far seven turnovers, but insanely, even in what resembled a poor performance from Gru, he found a way to post a bewildering stat line of 25, 20, and 9. Still doing that on a bad night shows you how ridiculous Joker is. But Michael Porter Jr. bailed out the Nuggets when they needed a basket, more than any other Denver player in the first round. MPJ's tunnel vision focus amidst off-court distractions has allowed the Mile High's increasingly reliable 25-year-old third option to produce an insanely efficient Nugget third best 23 points per game so far in the postseason. The durability from not only Jamal Murray but Contavious Caldwell Pope to fight through an injury was commendable but also required. KCP rolled his ankle and was forced to limp back to the locker room just barely under his own power. However, as you saw in the film breakdown, KCP would return to execute foundational plays to seal Denver a second round appearance. The tough as nails Caldwell Pope is a world champ with both the Lakers in 2020 and the Nugs in 2023 because of his toughness both mentally and physically. In terms of the Nuggets trailing for a majority of the first round, bad starts have become a theme this Nuggets team should consider shaking right away come Saturday in Game 1 of Round 2 against Minnesota. That said, a satirical theory is that Gru was just playing with his minions in terms of Jokic letting the Lakers get up. Regardless, it was impossible for LeBron James to go back in time to convince Nikola Jokic to pursue horse racing. That was always a long shot, though. The least LeBron could have done is pick Jokic before his last selection at the 2023 All-Star Draft. Since James picked Jokic last, Nikola is 12-1 in matchups with LeBron. Nevertheless, the Lakers still gave Denver a run for their money, despite the fact that Los Angeles was gentleman swept. But whoever you root for, we were all blessed as NBA fans that the rematch from last year's West Finals came in the first round of the 2024 postseason, and every game was pretty dope. However, should the Nuggets be concerned with their slow starts? Answer in the comments section for a chance at next video shoutout. Today's shoutout goes to Jay Baller, who says the most impressive thing about the Wolves is their historic defense going from a franchise that never seemed to care to now having one of the best defenses in NBA history. Top 5 people with the most commenter shoutouts by June 21st earn free merch, so drop your take down below. Have a good one, see you next time, and peace.